Live to our top story, a handover ceremony between the former uh, Prime Minister Edouard Philippe and his replacement Jean Castex. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you here to the Matignon Hotel and to hand over the task to you. You will take charge of the government's action. It's a huge honor. It's a fairly sizable task. But I know your intelligence, your very great knowledge of this country, your true attachment to the state, your political sense, and your very strong mind. I have no doubt whatsoever that you will be able to take the sometimes very difficult decisions. You will know to make the right ones. I'd like to say to you, I wish you I don't really like to say, I don't really need to wish you courage. I know you have a great deal of it. Furthermore, if you didn't have courage, you wouldn't be here. But I do, very sincerely, wish you every success, every success, a great deal of success. Success for you, of course, but most importantly, success for our country, which is overcoming, hasn't fully overcome, is overcoming a health crisis. You know full well all the aspects, the dangers and the measures that have been taken to counter these risks. Our country, which has weathered this crisis as others, very much needs an open mind and a firm hand. I believe you have that open mind and firm hand. If I may, Mr. Prime Minister, when I'm leaving this Hotel de Matignon, if I might um, say a few words of thanks, thank you, first of all, to the French President of the Republic, for over uh, three years has placed his trust in me. I've been very fortunate to be able to work with him with a great deal of trust and very smooth relations. I can say that all my life, I will remember these as three truly exceptional years, uh, wealth of activities. I'd also like to thank all the members of the government. The transfer of power taking place right now has been a quick uh, transfer. Therefore, I've not been able to say to each and every member of the government just how much I respect them and like all of them. Together with them, we've sometimes gone through difficult times, often uh, enjoyable times as well. At this time, I would like to say I'm very grateful to them, one and all, if they're watching me and if they're hearing me, I'm saying this to them. I'd also like to thank, you can well imagine, all the members of Parliament, first and foremost, of course, the parliamentarians that are members of the uh, majority that have been at my side, supported me, have uh, never wavered. They have been and they will continue to be demanding, they were and they will be determined to um, adhere to the commitments entered into in 2017 by the President of the Republic. Very sincerely, I would like to thank them and say to them, as long as I'm able to do so, I will assist them. I'd also like to use the opportunity to thank other members of parliament that aren't part of the majority, that are in the opposition. A good democracy um, requires a good opposition. Opposition is necessary in a democracy, and the opposition is also demanding and determined. I'd like to thank the heads of uh, caucuses and all the members of parliament, opposition members, who've been critical and all the while probably enabled us to strive to do our best. I'd also like to thank all the persons I've worked with, um, that I've been able to work with. To be at the Matignon doesn't mean just to be in charge of the government, it also means to have an opportunity to meet with many people, meetings with people in various areas of power and influence, and also meetings with people who believe in their country, who are trying to bring forward their beliefs, their ideas, and uh, their matters at hand. Sometimes they come to you impressed uh, by the fact you're prime minister, but often, really, they want to talk to the person who's in the office of prime minister. These meetings, these wonderful meetings, I have many of these over the three years. I know you'll have many such meetings in the upcoming months and years. 
Sometimes I'm talking about elected officials I meet with, mayors of communities, as you are a mayor, as I will again become mayor. Sometimes these are people in charge of trade unions, trade union officials, or sometimes regular uh, fellow citizens, full-fledged citizens, coming to defend their ideas, that want to share ideas with you. I can think of a thousand different people I've met with from throughout the country. I'd especially greet the uh, political forces of New Caledonia. You'll see, Mr. Prime Minister, at Matignon, we talk a lot about New Caledonia. The extraordinary process, extraordinary process, which was started in New Caledonia well before my government, which has been continued by many prime ministers since Michel Rocard, has been a fascinating, difficult, complex process, still uncertain, and we must very much pay tribute to our citizens from that Pacific area that are endeavoring to find the right solutions for that amazing island. We're so attached to. You'll understand very easily, Mr. Prime Minister. I'd like to thank, also very sincerely, everyone who supported me here at Matignon Mem. Being Prime Minister means being in charge of a government's actions, serving the state. It also means you have support by team members. Uh, by the Prime Minister's office, remarkably well managed, by men and women who sometimes were selected by others, not by me. I didn't know all of them when I arrived here. Every single day, though, they demonstrated, constantly and always, and sometimes in difficult conditions, they demonstrated a sense of the state, public service, a great attachment to our country, to France, which gives me absolute, absolute confidence in our ability to rise to the most difficult challenges. To all of those people, members of my office, members of the administration, who uh, keep Matignon going, I say to all state officials who very much believe in the meaning of the state, and I say to all of our fellow citizens who have a firm belief entrenched in them that um, civics isn't just something for other people, it's uh, the cement that binds a great nation together. So sincere thanks to everyone, to them one and all, and my gratitude to them one and all. You, Mr. Prime Minister, henceforth will continue serving France. You've been serving France for quite some time already. It's a beautiful responsibility. I'm somewhat moved in saying this to you, but be good at it, as we say in my place. Um, may the good winds bring you forward. Okay, that's good. Monsieur le Premier Ministre, Mr. Prime Minister, cher Edouard, dear Edouard, les trois années. The three years that you spent here at Matignon leading the government's actions will, beyond the shadow of a doubt, be an important part of the history of this country. If I might begin with the end, 
because you were the head of government who had to grapple with the most serious health crisis that's ever affected our country, Europe, the world, for many, many decades. And, Mr. Prime Minister, it also so happens that it's in this situation that you were so kind as to uh, call on me to support you in this exercise, particularly during the uh, so-called easing of lockdown phase. So it was my honor to work closely under your authority on a daily basis and under the authority of the President of the Republic. So here, very publicly, I would just like to say to you, I can testify to your commitment. You've displayed it. Your concern, ongoing, constant concern to protect our fellow citizens, to explain the situation, the arrangements required by the situation. You've always done this in a very clear fashion, explaining things very carefully. And that's the way you always spoke. Well before the beginning of this health crisis. Need I remind anyone, Mr. Prime Minister, that at the end of last year, at the beginning of this year, France, our country, saw one of the highest growth rates in Europe. Unemployment, still far too high, of course, always, but unemployment had reached its lowest level of the past 10 years. The scale of investments was the highest it had been in 10 years' time. Per the growth in purchasing power was the strongest. You had begun cutting taxes in one of the most strongest ways that have been the case in the past 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, these are all of the facts. We could add to these facts structural reforms that you carried out and to come back to the most recent time. I would mention the measures your government enacted that were among the strictest in all of Europe to prevent our economy from collapsing. Let's also recall this point. You've paid constant, very careful attention to the weakest members of our society with the least resources. The French saw this very clearly. They got to know you. I think even just as I were able to identify an Edouard Philippe style, an Edouard Philippe style. Not, not a style like a fashion item. You know, earlier you mentioned the word courage. That's an essential virtue not only in politics, but especially in uh, running a government, being clear-sighted, uh, seeing things from on high. I believe in mentioning those words, everybody uh, realizes this. And lastly, to not to be too lengthy, sir, you wouldn't like this, but I would also say you've shown great elegance elegance in every sense of the word. Dear Edouard, I understand the emotion that you feel during this solemn moment, as uh, you can well imagine uh, would be my emotion as well at the time I'm taking on uh, this uh, heavy task.
Nous en avons souvent parlé ensemble. We've, together we've often discussed this. Quelque chose vient atténuer. I know cette situation. Something Le can uh, lessen the situation, and that is, you are now going to get to go back to your beautiful office of mayor in your beautiful city of Le Havre and uh, all of its residents who recently, yet again, showed how much they like you and um, attached there to you in uh, what we could call possibly tough times. A mayor from the south, a little bit farther away, from the countryside, is going to now replace a mayor from uh, the north of the Loire, from a big city, an industrial city, uh, harbor city. That's how France is, in its diversity, but more than ever, we must pull together, reconcile, come together, as you have helped us do. Now, of course, I'm sure our styles are different, but, ladies and gentlemen, I would dare, together with Edouard Philippe, say that we share a community of values these democratic republic, republican values, first and foremost amongst which, I think, uh, an idea according to which serving the general good, the general interest, and the state must prevail over any other consideration. Today, as the President of the Republic has decided, a new stage of his term in office is beginning. It's, Mr. Prime Minister, very much uh, caused by a new context, a heavy context, a difficult one, the health crisis as you said, unfortunately, is not over with. We can say, we can look to surrounding to neighboring countries and realize this fact. The economic crisis and social crisis have already begun. Therefore, priorities will have to shift. Methods, therefore, will have to be adjusted. And more than ever, we will have to unite the nation to combat this crisis. And most importantly, continuing the substantive reforms that you have begun to make sure that afterwards we will be stronger and stand together even better. Thank you very much, dear Edouard, certainly for the words you said, but most importantly, thank you for your actions serving our fellow citizens. No one here would doubt that your tremendous talent will continue to be used to serve France. been watching a handover ceremony here in Paris between France's outgoing Prime Minister Edouard Philippe and his uh, replacement Jean Castex. We'll be bringing you the highlights of